Hi, everyone. Our next speaker is Larry Long Jr. at SEG Sales Summit. We're so excited today. Um, if you haven't had a chance to go out and watch Larry um, on YouTube, his podcast, it doesn't matter where you have to listen to Larry Long Jr. He's an inspiration to many, great coach, great family man. Um, I've had the ability to get to know him and just listen to stories that have inspired me. And I know around the world, he's inspired a lot of people. So welcome, Larry. It's so great to have you today. Brian, it's so great to be had. I'm happy to be here. You know, it wouldn't be a great entrance if I didn't have the gold mic. I'm hoping that I'll have some drop the mic moments. <laughs> I love it. And I, I, I remember the first time I talked to you, you know, you dropped the mic on uh, a situation that you were in and you're like, Ryan, it was like three years I was doing this. And, you know, I, I, this was the next step in my career. And I dropped the mic and I got excited and we went back and forth. And I remember we hit it off right away. It was just and I think we spitballed for like 90 minutes after that. And it's just it's been great. You know, with that, Larry every one of the people we've had on here are extraordinary they're looking for and i've talked to two or three people that you've introduced me to and they said look larry's my mentor when i need something when i'm down or i have a question about my career i call larry long jr he's the man he's extraordinary he's unbelievable he you know is just a, a friend a mentor and you know you've just helped so many people but with that, what I've noticed with every person that's extraordinary, they also have this point in their life. And, you know, with SEG Sales Summit, we're talking about vulnerability. And I found I have found it very interested, interesting that people that do what you do and coach and train others, there's a reason they can do that because they usually can go back and reflect and say, look, I couldn't do this today, what I'm doing. If I didn't go through this or this in life, this is what's made me the person I am to help others. Would you mind just sharing like one or two of those moments in your life that just boomed, allowed you to be helping people like you are today? Yeah, I mean, it, it's really been a culmination. I can't say there's been one or two defining moments, but really my whole life as a youngster, we moved around a lot. My, my parents worked for Department of Veterans Affairs, serving veterans who served us they put their lives on the line so that we could have freedom and i just learned at an early age that it's really about service it's about giving to others and uh, just being able to see that example from my mother and my father on a day-to-day -day basis being able to hear uh the conversations and see what they did it was kind of like a just a way of life and my father grew up in baltimore city in the projects and mm -hmm. he made it very crystal clear that uh, we were very fortunate to be where we were. And with that circumstance, it was our responsibility to make sure that we gave back, to make sure that we helped others. And if we didn't do that, uh, shame on us. We were really doing a disservice. Yeah. We weren't doing our job. So that's really stuck with me throughout my entire personal and professional career. Yeah, that that's awesome. And I know also I've I've read a lot of your stuff and just your father, what he meant to you. and. You know, the, the quote, you know, about him being your idol, and I actually read this on LinkedIn, you never know when we'll cross the finish line. I encourage each and every one of you to make it a great day. And you talked about that, about your father. Can you share a little bit about that? Because it, it touched me when I read it. Yeah, make it a great day. It's your choice. We all have a choice. And I mean, my father, he meant the world to me. He still does. Uh, he passed five and a half years ago, but he still lives on within me and within sorry, others. Sorry. And uh, no, we're all marching to that finish line. Come on now, Brian. We just yeah, don't know exactly. when. So, so, so knowing that. It's not our plan, right? Guys, it's not our plan. It, 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 it's not. <laughs> so every moment that we have on this earth, we better make sure that we're making the most of it. I, I think it's called Carpe Diem, seize the day. And I met a gentleman that had a tattoo of Carpe Diem and then Carpe Noctum. I said, I'm a little bit too old to be seizing the <laughs> night, but I can definitely seize the day. So really what I learned, uh, one of many lessons that I learned from my father is that, hey, each and every day is an opportunity for us to give back to others. And there's a quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Life's most urgent and persistent question is, 
What are you doing to help others? And I ask myself that every day, multiple times a day. Hey, Larry Long Jr., what are you doing to help someone else out? So when you talk about the, uh, the folks sharing sentiments about me mentoring, helping them, that just warms my heart because I'm very intentional and I, I try my best to give of myself because I've been blessed. I mean, let's keep it real. I've been blessed throughout my <laughs> whole life. Had the opportunity, great parents, great coaches, great teachers, great friends, family, supporters, played baseball at University of Maryland, go Terps, learned so much from that experience that's <laughs> really helped me to excel and help me to learn uh professionally so just us being here right now is a blessing I'm, I'm truly honored and privileged to be chatting with you right now uh it's it, it's it's an honor and you know i i love the, the the baseball part i remember talking to you about what you learned from baseball and how you applied it to life and you know i, I and honestly it seems like even though this is a sales summit I feel like what we're getting most out of this is the experiences from people's past that has nothing to do with sales, but it's how they've applied it to sales. And it was interesting. I remember interviewing someone and they said, look, sometimes when I'm interviewing people, they tell me about the three years of their sales experience, but that's not usually who I hire. The person I connect with is they tell me about them and their stories before sales and that's when i say i want to hire this person they accomplish this or accomplish that that's going to apply to sales so i'd love to hear more about you know your baseball career and how you've applied that to to sales and then also coaching yeah that's great and you know it wouldn't be a baseball conversation without the pink <laughs> baseball bat hopefully it matches my uh <laughs> a little pocket square but essentially I, i'm a little guy i'm five foot nine and three quarters that's probably rounding up i actually round up to six feet but uh to be able to play on scholarship at university of maryland as a little guy and to start as a freshman i mean i came in and I've got a big heart. I might be small in stature. And uh, it's funny because my father, his nickname was Shorty Long. He ran track at Maryland. My sister ran track at Maryland. I was the black sheep of the family, literally and figuratively playing baseball. They're like, baseball, what's that? But uh, I started <laughs> off my, my college career one for my first 24. And you don't have to be a math major to know, ooh, that's not good. That'll that'll get you playing the position of left out. Hey coach, can I get in? Nah, go to the end of the bench, you're left out today. But uh, I, I remember having a conversation with my father. It was after we played UNC Greensboro and my dad traveled down from Maryland as he did for all my games. He made it a point to show up to all my games, which is just so meaningful. But uh, I remember him saying, how you doing? And I said, dad, terrible. I'm feeling terrible. I stink. I don't belong in division one. I definitely don't belong in the ACC, mm -hmm. one of the top divisions for baseball. Yeah. And he reached through that phone and he had some choice words. He said, boy, I, I didn't raise you. You're, you're not gonna have my name with an attitude like that. <laughs> you're already defeated. He said, you know how we do. You better get back to the drawing board. You better get back on the tee. You better get your mind right or else you don't stand a chance and we don't give up. We're not waving the white flag. And I followed his lead and followed his advice. I got back on the tee, started getting my mind right. And University of North Carolina Chapel Hill came to town, the Tar Heels. And I got in on Friday, two for two, started on Saturday, three for four. But who's counting? Sunday went two for four. And all of a sudden that one for that one for 24 doesn't take a math major. Those hits started yeah. racking up and I started the rest of my freshman freshman year. I uh, started my sophomore, junior and senior year as a captain and just, just those learnings through baseball. And I used to own a baseball academy teaching youngsters the fundamentals of the game on the field, but more importantly, the fundamentals of life. And I say fundamentals, capital F-U-N. Yeah. If you're not having fun with what you're doing, it's time to find something else. And baseball and team sports will teach you persistence, goal setting, overcoming failure. How do you brush yourself off and get back up? Um, how do you persevere through the storm, through the chaos? When you're going through a slump, how do you keep that happy medium? How do you keep that confidence? How do you work yourself out of it uh, and have that proper mindset? And that's why I love working with athletes because number one, they're competitive, but number two, they're coachable. They've been coached their entire life. And I absolutely love it. If you're not coming from a growth mindset, if you're not coachable, eh, you can't be on my team.
Yeah. Well, I, I love something you just shared there. I, I can imagine when you're in a when you uh, were voted to be a captain, and then you have another new freshman coming in. You went one for twenty four, and the person you you know what they're going through, and they're looking at Larry Long Jr. going, "But this is the captain. This is like the best player on the baseball team." And you're able to put your arm around them and say, "Let me tell you a story." And you said something interesting. You didn't, you had that conversation with your dad, but you immediately headed to the T in practice, just like sales, right? Like I had a bad week, I had a bad month and it's not time to panic. It's time, which I love that you said, I went back to the T, right? Explain a little bit about that. Like, yeah. It, it's the basics. And I'm not sure if Alan Iverson is tuning in, but yes, Alan, we're talking about practice, not the game. <laughs> You've got to practice and hone your skills. As a sales professional, it's your responsibility to get the reps in. And essentially, you've got to put yourself in a position to have success when the lights are shining. And, and some people call it role play. I know some people break out in the hives. They're like, ah, I don't like the role play. Well, you better like to role play because I call it confidence building. And essentially, if you can't get it done in practice, how can I expect you to do it when it's come game time? There's there's not too many people. Yeah. Maybe if you were the Lakers with Kobe and Shaq, you could just flip the switch during the playoffs and turn it on. But I don't know too many sales professionals that can turn it on without going through those reps, building that confidence. Uh, one of my favorite comedians, Kevin Hart says it best, say it with your chest. You can't say it with your chest if you haven't prepared if you haven't practiced, if you're just not in the right mindset that, hey, I'm confident that my game is tight and I'm ready to add value at the highest level to these prospects and to these clients, good luck. So I encourage you to get on the tee, go through and practice your, 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 your sales process, all aspects, whether it's a cold call, whether it's a discovery call, whether it's a demo, a negotiation, proposal, a closing, you name it. I encourage you to practice. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, it's almost like right now over this past 13 months, I mean, it's not been easy with the pandemic, but what's awesome about it is I can literally wake up in the morning now because everything's virtually. And I go through LinkedIn and I click on your videos and then I click on, you know, Jack Daly's videos. And then I click on, you know, another company. And I'm like, I have all this information at my fingertips because of this new virtual world we're living in. We didn't, before the pandemic, we really didn't have time to sit in four walls going, what can I produce today to help people? Because we were, I was at, I'm guilty of this. I was running around my office, getting things done, but never really like help someone, right? And that's what it's all about. It's how can I help someone? And that's really what you're doing. And people can go and get your tips and they can practice and then practice and implement it and execute it, right? That's the most important part right there. There's so much information, information overload. You can go to my best friend, yep. Google, and find anything. You can go on <laughs> YouTube and find anything. And there's just so much great information, but the key, and the, the proof is in the pudding, the key is what you're gonna do with it. How are you going yep. to turn those learnings into action and really drive results? Because if you know something and you don't do it, you're gonna end up with the same results. You're gonna, essentially, it's like you're spinning your wheels. You're, you're making progress, but you're not going anywhere. You're, you're, you're moving, but you're, it's kind of like the dog that chases his tail. It's wearing itself yeah. out, but it's not making any progress. <laughs> We're trying to get first downs. So I'm trying to take that knowledge and trying to figure out how can I implement this into my game plan? How can I adjust and adapt my game plan? Kind of like the uh, Patriots did in the Super Bowl when they came back to beat the uh, Atlanta Falcons. They were getting blown out at halftime. Yep. They went in, they ripped up the playbook. They said, oh, we better install some different plays if we want different results. And they did. They mounted a comeback. So I ask everyone out there, what plays, what actions are you taking to get different results? And even if you're doing good, I challenge you, what can you do to be doing even better? Yeah, I, I love that. You know, another thing you do extremely well, and I think every salesperson that's listening to this, and I'm not, forget sales, C-level, um, director of sales, chief marketing officer, I have found people love to laugh and people that you connect with 
and that first 15, 20 seconds want to continue a conversation with you and people, you know, that just get in, just get on a call and they do their script and they're throwing their value prop. And, you know, do you mind if I ask you a question? And it's like, oh, Cal, not, not this call, right? Or not this presentation. I would love to hear from you because I remember the first time I met you, you showed up, you had music, you had a mic, you're like, Brian B. And you just yelled at, and I was there and I was like, this is awesome. You got a big smile on my face. And I don't think there's enough of that right now. I think salespeople have the ability to connect, communicate and collaborate because they can research so much more on people and they can almost show up to every call and make someone smile in the first 10 seconds because they read something or there's something in common. I mean, could you just go through the coaching on that for people? And It's, it's so important. So I don't care if you're in B2B. I don't care if you're in B2C. I don't care if you're in B2B2C. There's too many acronyms for me, but we're all in P2P. People <laughs> yep. to people. And, and people... Most people, from what I found, they like to enjoy life. They like to laugh. They're watching Netflix. They're watching the Grammys, the Emmys. They're watching sports, the Super Bowl. March Madness is right around the corner. That doesn't change just because we're in the business environment. And I would say it's heightened now that we're all going through the Zoom, Zoom, Zoom fatigue. People want to have a good time. And if you're not having fun with what you're doing, good luck passing that along. It's kind of like the droplets. I take my mask off. I keep my mask on to keep the droplets in. I take the mask off to spread positivity, to spread smiles. Because whether you like it or not, smiles are contagious. You can start. You can test it out. Go ahead and get a mirror. Hold that mirror up and smile. I guarantee you that that person in the mirror is going to smile back. It's the same thing with Zooms. Try it. Stand up. Get up. Stand up like the great philosopher Bob Marley said and smile to start off a meeting. You talked about doing research and understanding the background of the, the, the person or the people that you're speaking with and just realizing that we're all people. And, and, and essentially, I don't care if you're a newborn. I don't care if you're 100 years old. This pandemic has had an impact on you over the last 11 months, 12 yeah. months. Uh, it's having an impact on everyone. I always like to start off with the question of how are you doing? And then listening. My my word for 2021 is shh, listen and listen to understand, not listen to respond. I know sometimes it's kind of like you're doing double dutch. You're listening just so you can jump <laughs> in and talk about how much you know. No, you're doing it wrong. You need to listen and be curious about why, about how long, about the mindset. What made you do it that way? I'll give you two fire questions. Whenever I'm in a pinch, I pull these, I got them up my sleeve. Walk me through your process, dot, dot, dot. The next one is what's holding you back, dot, dot, dot. Those are just two fire questions. Now you should have other questions, but essentially you want to create that relationship. You want to create that dynamic that shows people that you care. There's another saying, and I've, I've got tons of sayings that I pulled from here and there, but there's one that says people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And they don't want to hear everyone says, oh, I care about my clients. Oh, we're the best. Well, show me, show me what you're working with. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's that vulnerability part, right? And asking good questions and curiosity. I noticed you said, why can you explain like open-end questions? I care. I'm curious. Instead of direct questions, do you want to do business with me? No. Yes. Right. Like I, I, I love that. And every salesperson, just anyone in general, right? Even, even your, your, your significant other, your wife or your husband, like, Hey, you know, please explain your day to me. I'm curious, right? And sometimes I catch myself, I'm very direct. I get out of work, just what about this? What about it? And just move on, right? Instead of I'm curious and be sincere about it. I mean, right? So it's great. It's being curious you know, there is a, like, a, like, like, like a kid. I've got two kids and my 11 year old son, Larry Long the third, Trey Trey, 
he, he's at that age where he questions my seven-year-old. Well, why, daddy? Why do I have to wake up at 7.30? Because you got to get ready for school. You got to get yourself ready. We can't wake up at 7.55 and be ready for eight o'clock meeting. Uh, well, why, daddy? Uh, how come I have to do that? If we can take that same approach in the sales process, now we start to understand and we don't have to assume. You know what they say about assume. I don't, I don't yeah. want that to be said about me. I'm going to ask, I'm going to listen, I'm going to dig in, I'm going to take notes, I'm gonna dig in even deeper to make sure that I have a full picture and full understanding of their situation. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's that vulnerability part. I, I had a, a, a past client this morning that is now going back out and she's going to get a couple more quotes because they had a shutdown before the pandemic. And now they're going to be like, we're going to start this again, but we're looking at two other companies. And I'm like, whoa, well, I, oh, explain that to me. What do we do wrong? Right. And I remember she said, well, here's the two things that I think you could have done better. And I think that vulnerability and listening, and I had her explain it all. And I got to the end and I said, you know what? You're right. We totally screwed up. And I just watched her come down and say, we need to talk more. And we talked and we have another meeting next week, but it's just listening because you're so quick to jump in and say, hey, this is how I can beat those two competitors. If you're not curious, you don't ask questions. I didn't even know we did anything wrong, <laughs> right? And it, it probably would have been over before we even started talking. So I, I love that. An another thing, uh, Larry, that I remember talking to you about this and I loved it. And I think if everyone, it doesn't matter if you're a kid, you're an adult, I've stolen it from you. I've even told people about it. So I, I, I never want to take your credit, but people get down and it, 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 life's sometimes hard. And I remember you said to me, my mom told me every morning when I wake up, say, I am somebody. And I don't remember if it was when he woke up or when he went to bed or both, but I remember you going through that. And you said, Brian, it really helped me in life because I just said it over and over and over. I'd love just to hear more about that. Wow, you've got a great memory. So uh, I was five, maybe six years old. And uh, that's a tough age. You're trying to figure things out and confidence. You're in school. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I remember my mom, we would say our prayer and we moved around a lot. I moved around, I think six different cities, just at VA medical center. So uh, my favorite song was make new friends, but keep the old one is silver while mm -hmm. the other is gold. <laughs> uh, so those transitions were, were tough. You're leaving your, your, your buddies from the playground and you got to make new yeah. friends. But my mom said, Hey, we're going to say our prayer at night. And then little Larry, you're going to stand up and you're going to say it out loud with your chest up, I am somebody. And when you say that 10 times, 365 days in a year, I'm not a math major, but that starts to add up. And when you say it, you start to believe it in your heart. You start to believe it in your mind, not just your words, but your whole being just goes around like, I am somebody. <laughs> so yeah. I encourage yeah. anyone that's, that's challenged because life is tough. It is a four letter word. It's tough. I encourage you to say those verbal affirmations and you can do it every morning. You can do it every evening, but you really got to say it and believe it. And essentially I'll give you a story. It was December the 10th uh, of 20. Oh my goodness. 2016. I uh, talked to my father. He was getting uh, amyloidosis cancer treatment up in Boston. And I said, hey, Pops, that's what my kids called him. Hey, Pops, how you feeling? He said, Larry, best I've ever felt. He was lying his behind off. But essentially, he was, <laughs> yeah. trying, he was trying to convince his mind that, hey, I'm feeling good. He passed away on December 11th. Uh, a day after, Ooh, less than 24 hours after he told me, no, don't be sorry. Do not be sorry. Yeah. He lived a great life. He passed on so many wow. lessons. And I'm trying to take that baton now and do the same. So we're blessed. But I just encourage each and every person out there, believe in yourself. It starts with you. But also surround yourself with a crew that's supportive, that's encouraging, but also one that will snatch you up like my father did and give you a swift kick in the behind when you need it. 
that's what we need. Uh, I've heard it called a personal board of directors. For me, it's just my crew, my high school crew, my college baseball crew, my mom and my wife who, 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 who love the opportunity to shake me up and get me on that right track. <laughs> but it, 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 it does us all so well. If you look at the best athletes, some of the best executives, they have coaches. And uh, I, I would say yeah. don't be above coaching, mentorship, as well as mentoring others. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I think like someone like you, um, I read that on your LinkedIn that you're seeking to learn and grow. And people like are watching you every day, but you're seeking that. I, I love just to hear more about your coaches and how you go about that process because there's there's some people listening to this like, how do I do that? I mean, because it is kind of going to people if you're not used to it and you're, I don't know, 50 years old saying, hey, I need you as a coach. I need help. And maybe that person's a C-level person or runs a sale, big sales department, but maybe has never stepped out and said, look, I'm vulnerable. I need help. And I think it happens all the time. Like, how do you go about it? Number one, you have to acknowledge and you have to want it inside. I've got a growth mindset and I'm intentional with trying to learn and not just learning from those that have had successes, but those that have failed to learn, hey, what would you do differently so that hopefully you can be a Sherpa to me? So I've got mentors, Mark Winchester, my mom, I talk to her every night, my wife, we talk throughout mm -hmm. the day. I've got many mentors, folks that help me in different situations, but I'm intentional and in what I've learned, and I haven't always been this way. I don't know if you can see the salt and pepper. I'm getting older <laughs> and wiser. My wife said, don't go telling anyone that. You're getting older, but you're not getting any wiser. I said, oh, <laughs> my wife, she keeps me in my place. But essentially, <laughs> I've been intentional with asking people and letting the ego go. I b believe, believe it or not, I once had an ego that said, oh, I can do it all on my own. Yeah. No, why would you, you big dummy? Why try to do it yeah. on your own when other people have already bashed their head against that wall and they can guide you and say, hey, Larry, you don't need the zig here. You need the zag. <laughs> it's like having your own personal Sherpa that can help you to the mountaintop. So dropping the ego and then reaching yeah. out and asking. And what I found is when you make the ask, people are flattered. People, most people want to help. Now, sometimes they might not have the time and that's okay. Hey, if you don't have the time, who do you recommend that I ask? Because generally successful people, they roll with other successful people. Yeah. It's kind of like the flip side, people that aren't very nice, they generally roll either by themselves or other people that aren't very nice. And it's like, oh, I'm trying to avoid you like the plague, but people that are getting it <laughs> in and doing it the right way, it's like, hey, if you can't help me, who do you think might be able to assist me? And I'm just being vulnerable. I'm, I'm acknowledging that I need assistance and I'm not afraid to make that ask. That, that's awesome advice. Um, also, I know your primary goal is to help sales professionals go to the next level. And that's what you, you live for, you know, and coach people on and help people. Is there like one or two areas that when you're coaching, you're like, this is the number one or the top two areas that you focus on when you're working with people in sales? Yeah, so it really varies. And my goal mm -hmm. is to have a positive impact to help professionals take their game to that next level. I can tell you that some of the trends that I'm seeing because I take notes, number one yeah. is time, time management. So I encourage everyone mm -hmm. right now, take a look at your calendar and let's see. If I look at your calendar, I can see what's important to you. And if your calendar yeah. is loose, you don't have it blocked out, uh, what's your plan? What do you got going on? It doesn't seem like there's any direction. Your calendar, it's really that uh, compass. And I don't know about you, if I was to sail from New York to Africa without a compass, I'd probably end up making a lot of left turns, end up in the North Pole, chilling with Santa. <laughs> I'm trying to get to the motherland. So a sense of your compass, where do you spend your time? How do you prioritize? And what do you say no to? Sometimes the most important yeah. things are saying no to those things that aren't productive. I, I like to draw a circle and put a dollar sign. There's revenue generating activities, and then there's a bigger circle. There's other 
And a lot of times, if you're if you do an audit and you keep it real, you spend a lot of time on that other. It might make you feel like you're being busy and productive, but no. How do we focus and make that circle with revenue generating activities bigger? So that's number one, managing time. Number mm -hmm. two, mindset. And I've seen it. I'm not the only one. I'm not the only crazy one. It's not even crazy, yeah. but there's a voice that there's a little voice that walks around in the back of my head that that uh, plant seeds of FUD, uh, not Elmer FUD, but fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And essentially, that mindset. If uh, Henry Ford said it best, whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, you're right. And essentially having that proper mindset, which ties into, I call it MBS, your mind, your body, and your soul, really taking care of yourself as a professional to make sure that you can come in and deliver at that 100% capacity. You're bringing your whole self in there, you're focused, and you're ready to optimize whatever your max performance is. And I learned that from my father. My father was a long jumper mm -hmm. and triple jumper in track. And he always talked about, it. I would go to tryout camps for baseball. And he's like, Larry, I don't care what the other kids are doing. Sit down and conserve your energy. Let's make sure you get a good night's sleep. Let's make sure that if you're running, I know everyone else is wearing baseball cleats. You're going to put on track shoes. They're a little bit lighter. They're made for speed. And we're not going mm -hmm. to do what all the other kids are doing because you don't want to be like the other kids in a sea of black boxes. How do you stand out as a green triangle? Better yet, how do you stand out as a purple trapezoid? And I don't even know how to spell trapezoid, but you can't say the word <laughs> trapezoid and not crack a smile. So I'm trying to be a purple trapezoid in a sea of black boxes. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so time management and mindset, right? Um, it's interesting, something you touched on there. I noticed in the circle, it's it, it, it can be health. It could be taking care of yourself to be you know, better at work. Cause what I see too, it could be your faith. It could be, you know, your workouts, whatever it may be. But what I've noticed, and I, I see this in myself and I look back at my worst days, it's when I try to work 14 hours and I go to bed at night or wake up in the morning angry. And I realize cause I'm not personally either, maybe not, maybe I didn't connect with my family that day. I didn't take a jog. I didn't read in the morning. I didn't pray, whatever it could be. Like I ruined the good in my day by thinking I achieved so much, but I wasn't right for every for, for other people. And that's including my coworkers. They, they see it when I walk through the door. They're like, he didn't get enough sleep. He actually looks a little, little, little tired and angry today. And they know it, right? Where when I do get my sleep and I work out and I talk to my family and I have dinner, you walk through the door the next day and you're like, go time and they're like yeah he's he's on his game today right so and i love that we're person all, all, yes sir we're all trying to solve to be kicking on all cylinders from faith to family to fitness to fun i'll even throw in a ph that sounds like a f philanthropy giving on to others giving back all of that combined i mean it really has a huge impact on you professionally and so many times people don't understand the connection it's it's definitely connected yeah it's a, absolutely so larry this this has been great you know I, you're extraordinary to me you just i i love listening to you i learned so much from you each time i talk to you and just you know i would just recommend anyone and i'm sure they will after they listen to this to follow you because you're an inspiration and just sharing everything you did today. So thank you so much. Just really appreciate it. Brian, thank you. This was an honor and a privilege. I'm so fortunate to be here. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to come here and chop it up with you.